Welcome to the ITK 4.3 release announcement webinar. Today we're going to be talking about what's new in the, the recently released ITK 4.3.0, all the great work that's gone into the project, and hopefully we're going to cover most of it. And if you have some questions or feedback, I'm happy to hear what you have to say. Please enter it into the chat and our moderator, Katie, will help pass that, those questions along. So ITK 4.3 has been in the works for quite a few months. It's an excellent release. We have a lot of great new features and improvements. It's very exciting. Uh, we have a lot of community me members working on it. This is a release since uh, 4.0. And there were a lot of funded projects. Some were extended and completed in this process, but we also had a lot of very good community work that was finished during this release. One of the big things that, that was finished was a experimental support for DCMTK. So DCMTK is a DICOM library. It's one of the major open source DICOM libraries out there and it has support for a lot of the different DICOM features. DICOM is a very complex medical imaging standard. So quite a, for quite a while ITK has been support for reading and writing files using GDCM, the GDCM library. And now we have another option, an experimental option, with DCMTK. And DCMTK support is experimental at this point. It's not enabled by default. If you want to use it, you have to turn on the module in your CMake configuration. And in that case, on Unix, on a Mac or Linux system, that's going to download the DCMTK library and build it for you on Windows at this point, at least, it's required to build the DCMTK library yourself. But once you do that, uh, you have DCMTK library and the ITK IO module built. Uh, you can use it in your application. You may need to register the IO factory manually, but it is available and it's there for experimentation. Reading is supported at this point. So, so we have a question from Wes. It says, uh, "Can I see the live stream?" We're gonna, so we have, we're broadcasting live on YouTube to the in internet. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so th that's better now. Hopefully you can see that okay on the live stream. So DCMTK there is, is exciting and hopefully we'll keep moving forward with that. It's disabled by default. We are considering turning it on by default fault again in the git master so that we can keep improving it. Another big development that has occurred that has kind of been spontaneous is better wrap ITK support. So there has been a lot of activity and buzz around wrap ITK in the community and on the mailing list and even though it's been in ITK for quite a while uh, a lot of the bugs were were fixed in the last couple of months. And Wrap ITK was previously a separate project from ITK. Now it's been integrated into the ITK source tree with 4.0 and it's in the modular source tree too with 4.0. But with this release we've had a number of bug fixes so it builds on more platforms and more compilers. A, a very large accomplishment was building on 
Windows Visual Studio 2008. So thanks to a lot of help from people in the community, that is now possible. There are still a lot of warnings that, that come up when it's built, but it's in pretty good shape. I created a wiki page to try to keep track of which platforms it's known to build on and which platforms it's not to, known to build on. It won't be building on Visual Studio 2010, um, but it should be working fine on your standard GCC compilers in Mac and Linux. And uh, Visual Studio 2008 is an option on Windows. So that's exciting. Um, Python wrapping, so you can use Python through ITK that way. There's also been a lot of really excellent work in terms of registration features that have been added since 4.2. This has been uh, the UPenn group and also the A2D2 group with their physics-based non-rigid registration. So these are new features to the ITK v4 registration framework that's been set up. Some exciting new things such as uh, multivariate metrics. Uh, you can, as you know, for example, register a pair of T1, T2 images with another pair of T1, T2 images using a single metric um, or even different metrics within the same registration uh, scheme, within the same optimization using these um, multivariate metrics, think RGB images, think uh, lots of different options now. And Nick Tustison has done a lot of great work adding new transforms. Uh, he's in this release and the previous release, he's done a lot of work with the B spline transforms, these uh, smoothly deformed ex exponential transforms, uh, evolution with velocity fields transforms, and uh, so that's all very exciting. And outside of the V4 registration framework, but new to V4, is uh, the A2D2 physics-based non-rigid registration, which is a nice option that uses block matching of features to create uh, do registration of, of these blocks inside a finite element uh, type transform for, for your motion model. So these are excellent. We've also had a number of updates to our third-party libraries. In general, we're trying to improve the third-party library support, make it easier to upgrade the libraries, make it easier to use system libraries on, on your system. Uh, we had the NRRD has been updated by Gordon Kindleman, who is the team author. So we are in sync now with the latest team in our ITK repository. LibTIFF, Brad Lowcamp helped a lot with that and you know, use your, a system LibTIFF. Uh, we're up to uh, a minor feature bump there. A lot of FFTW work has been uh, ironed down in edge cases, so you can use the FFT based filters and operations in, in ITK. There's bug fixes. Uh, Corey Common often helps a lot with that with that, there's been many fixes there, different situations. Uh, so that's that's always nice to have. And we've also had many, many bugs and issues fixed, including the object factory registration, at least a lot for image IO. Brad Lowcamp did a lot of work there. The patch based denoising that was introduced recently as new filters. Uh, we had some bug fixes and performance improve very good performance improvements. Um, fixes for mesh processing of Windows, F FTW, and a whole, a whole host more that I can't describe here. Very interesting is new vector image support. So the vector image, which is different from the ITK image, which is templated, it can be templated over vector type pixels, like a vector, a covariant vector, an RGB pixel. 
a lot of times they're treated in different ways because internally they have a different architecture of, of the pixel layout. But we, Brad Loebkamp has done a lot of work for simple ITK, kind of for simple ITK that is generally useful in ITK in the use of general use of vector images throughout many algorithms and filters. And you know, we now have a singular adapter class that can be used to iterate over a vector image pixel or a multi-component image pixels that works both with vector images and ITK images. So the toolkit is getting more general in that sense, which is very nice. And a lot of cold cruft and style issues were fixed. Hans Johnson is not afraid to go and make thousand line commits that clean things up very nicely. As we graduated and retired many of the compilers with a 4.0 release, there's a lot of cruft that, that's in the code that can now be removed and there's a lot of consistency issues in general that people have worked to improve and so just looking at and reading ITK code gets better and better as we go. And of course we're still using the legacy, ITK legacy CMIC variable and uh, there's, there's also compatibility um, kept, we try to keep compatibility as much as possible. There's a legacy CMake variable and a compatibility CMake variable so that everything should still be there if, if you st still need it. Also, some of these releases were made, put out with the 4.2.1 patch release, but there have been many performance um, related patches that have been fixed fixed performance and improved performance. You know, some are, are just parallelization of existing algorithms, but a lot are related to memory alignment and these get it input, get output calls from filter inner loops. And a final note is that Visual Studio support will no longer happen after this release. There's some people nipping, hoping to soon add features that will break Visual Studio 2005. So uh, if you're using Visual Studio 2005, uh, do not expect everything to compile for 4.4. And finally, uh, I want to make sure we say thanks to everybody who contributed patches to this release. And uh, well done. And, and this, is, this is your work. And Congratulations to, to for all your work, Andrea Shu, Andrea Katz, who did the registration. Arnaud helped a lot with the patches, with the mesh processing and the the bugs. Bahua Wu did uh, some more performance improvements and registration. Bill Renson does many very valuable things. Brad King, Brad Lokamp, Brian Avance, Brian Helba made his first commit. Corey Kwanen. David Doria fixed some nice things in the neighborhood iterators. Dirk Patfield made some important fixes. Fotis helped out with the patch. Gang Song, Gordon Kindleman with the NRD. Hans Johnson made many good improvements. Ho Chung made his first commits. JC made some nice commits from Slicer. We're excited to have Slicer commits coming back and forth through ITK. Jeffrey Duda, some nice transform work, I believe. Kent Williams, many good work with DCMTK, especially. Big congratulations to him. Patch based noising was helped fix by Chris. And Mario St Starring, very important patches, small patches. I'm Matt McCormick. There's also and Matthias Cease helped out with wrapping, as many people did. And Michael Stoffer and Nick Tustitson, lots of great registration improvements. Paul Novotny, Richard Baer, Willie Huber, and Xiao Xia Lu did some good work in updating the Vision Sizing Toolkit. So that's 
a tip of the iceberg of all the great things in ITK 4.3.0. Hopefully you'll try it out and, and give your feedback and contribute and help help us work towards 4.4. Are there any questions or comments or concerns from people? No, no questions? Actually, I have a question. Um, okay. You mentioned the uh, uh, wrapping uh, was now enabled by default. Is that uh, has that started showing up in the dashboards? I I, I just want to know because I am not sure that I've been testing that. Okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah, Kevin, you have some dashboard nightly builds that are I think are very valuable and appreciated. And so wrapping is working by default on most platforms. It's not enabled by default, but what did help make it make it possible that a, a big wrapping improvement is we had some contributed dashboard machines. There's a, you see there's about four or five nightly dashboard builds, one for Visual Studio and uh, a few for Mac OS and one for Linux, but we could use more of those. If you have the resources, it's a great thing to contribute. Wrapping now does take quite a bit of time to do a fresh build from scratch. So it's something to, con to, to consider. If you do have the, the resources available, uh, I can certainly enable it on, on bubbles. <laughs> that would that, be awesome. That definitely has the resources. Uh, I'll check in and make sure I know how to make sure that wrapping is enabled. Great, great, great. I yeah, really appreciate that. All you have to do is turn on uh, ITK wrap Python or so, I think, and then make sure you have the the appropriate headers installed for Python, the Python headers, the development headers. And and the other thing to keep in mind with wrapping, if you're building wrapping, is after you turn on enable wrapping, it, Python wrapping is turned on by default, and then there's some CMake variables. If you want a successful wrap build, you have to make sure all the CMake variables related to Python are pointing to the consistent Python library. And this is a bigger concern on Mac, especially where they it ships with the system Python and people also often install another third party Python. But if you grab through the cmakecache.txt, there's a Python related variables and that's just mostly the location of the Python header and the Python library and the Python interpreter. Uh, I believe Fedora has both uh, Python, which is two, and Python three, somewhere. And I think the default is Python two. Mm -hmm. Does do the the CMake uh, find Python's correctly find? Well, obviously, if it if it gets confused on some platforms, it'll get confused on some platforms. Uh, right. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, you have to check on it. I found so, that. Uh, yeah, you really got to watch and make sure that it, it's finding the consistent Python version, and that's a really good point for, for especially a lot of re Linux distributions have Python 2 and Python 3 installed at the same time. I think most people are still using Python 2, and I think that's what we're testing 2.7 or 2.6 at this point. So um, I mean, that's what people have had the most success yet. I'm not sure if people have tested 3. 3.x yet with Python, but um, that may be something to look into for the next release. I know Simple ITK, which has great support for many languages, is working towards uh, compatibility with Python 3. And as a teaser, the next Simple ITK release should be coming up around uh, within a month, I think. So keep Keep an eye out for that. There's a lot of good work that's being done there. Are there other questions or comments? That was a good one. Okay, no, no other questions or comments. Uh, yeah, thanks, thanks to everybody again for contributing, and it's very exciting to have such a great release. Um, there was a comment today on the mailing list by Bill, Bill and Marius. 
So it looks like we might have a patch release that will come out here quite soon to fix some minor issues, but that would be 4.3.1, so keep an eye out for that too. But um, most platforms, most use cases, it, it should be 4.3.0, should be good. Thank you guys, and we hope to see you around the ITK mailing list and the Garrett code review. Take care. Uh, enjoy ITK.